Hey there, folks, and welcome back to Keener's Bizarre Animal Adventure. Today's creature is one that I'm sure you all are aware of, as it's one of the most well-known and bizarre creatures from the land down under, the duck-billed platypus. Native to the eastern parts of Australia, specifically Queensland, South Wales, Victoria, and the island of Tasmania, platypuses make their home in swamps, marshes, rivers, lakes, and pools. They can grow anywhere between 12 and 20 inches in length, roughly 30 to 51 centimeters, and can weigh anywhere between 2 to 6 pounds, about 1 to 3 kilograms. These flat-footed mammals belong to a unique order known as monotremes. This order also includes their only living relative, the four known species of echidna. Monotremes have the unique distinction of being mammals that lay external eggs, meaning, unlike humans, they are non-placental. And unlike marsupials, like the kangaroo, they do not possess a pouch. Atop these features, platypuses are very unique among mammals. They do not have teats to feed their young, nourishing them with milk from pores on their underbelly rather than teats. It's a odd thing from a human perspective, but certainly among platypi and platypuses, platy people, uh, it's normal. And it probably traces back millions of years to the progenitors of the platypus. Now, these features alone may seem bizarre enough, but let's go a bit further down the rabbit hole, shall we? Platypuses are striking to look at. Not for a brilliant color or massive plumage, but for how amalgamated they look. From a duck-like bill to an otter-like body with webbed feet to a beaver's tail, they seem to be stitched together from parts of other animals. Something those that first studied the platypus believed true. In the 1790s, it was believed that these creatures were sent back from Australia as an elaborate hoax. And there was no way something like this was endemic to this place. Now, the bill is not quite the same as a duck's bill, despite the similar appearance. The bill is lined with dozens of electroreceptors, which the platypus uses to scan the water floor beneath it to find their prey items and to search for rocks and other things to make sure they didn't miss anything. Their prey tends to be worms, shellfish, small fish, and a personal favorite of mine, just for how fun it is to say, the yabby, which are essentially just crayfish. Now, from one end of the creature to the other, let's look at the beaver-like tail. This flat tail is used, much like it is in a beaver, as a rudder and a balancing mechanism to move efficiently through the water and balance. And when you're going between rocks and sea plants on the bottom of a river or lake bed, that is very essential. Lastly, but not leastly, the platypus is among one of the few venomous mammals. There is a caveat to this, though. Only the male platypus bears the venomous barb. It is understood that this barb is used during mating season to conflict with other males over territory and the right to mate with a female. But it could also be used for defense, though there haven't been many reports on the dangers of this poison, so the aesthetic of the venom being dangerous to a human is not quite known. Thank you for watching the real Keener's Bizarre Adventure on the Platypus, and I hope you have a good day, week of your life, and I'll catch you next time.